We start this episode by taking the live edge of some oak paneling on my table saw. I used an old IKEA drawer front as a jointing sled. This one doesn't have a rail, so I just push it against the fence while doing the cut, and the board is held down by a piece of scrap wood that I have screwed to the sled. Then I have a straight edge that I can reference against the fence and clean up the other side. Hi guys and welcome back to the show. For the regular views, you may see that there's a little bit of a difference in the workshop, but more about that in an upcoming vlog. Today, we are building a crosscut sled for my table saw, so let's not waste any more time and get right down to it. For the rails, I wanted some hard wood. And here I am ripping down some oak. I believe this is what is called summer oak in Norway otherwise known as English oak or European oak. Now, identifying wood species is not my forte, so to speak. So if you think otherwise, please tell me in the comments below. On purpose, I made the first rip a bit too wide. Then I could just tap lightly on the side of the fence and adjust until I had the perfect fit. Like a so. On a complete side note, here are some photos of a simple jewelry box I made for my cousin to her birthday, and it was made mostly using the crosscut sled I make in this video. I chopped the head of this target practice looking thing that used to be the lower shelf of my workbench before I chopped it. Then I could just flip it around and take a small shaving off the other side to clean up the edge. Luke, I am Nomad Makes. For the front and back fence I used some 2x4 that was also left from chopping my workbench. And lately I've made it a goal to see how many nails and screws I can run over the blades of my planer before it decides to haunt me in my sleep. Well at least it feels that way and one of these had a nasty screw hidden inside and I noticed too late. And it's not like it's some scrap wood that I picked up somewhere so... This is my own mistake and I have no one else to blame. Apart from Baby Vader, you know, when you think about it, maybe it was Baby Vader who put the screw in there. Using my Wixie digital angle gauge, I set up the blade to a perfect 90 degrees. This saw doesn't have a fine adjustment for the blade angle, but it is easier to adjust if you push from the side onto the motor. This was a tip I got from another YouTuber who makes really fun, relaxing and interesting videos, Mark McClooney. There is a link in the video description, so go check him out. Then I squared up the sides of the fences on my table saw. And I thought this board looked a little bit hairy, so I gave it a shave. Then I tilted the blade to 45 degrees and cut a chamfer on the front fence. This is to allow sawdust to escape so it doesn't push your workpiece out and throw off your cuts. 
Normally people use coins for this, but the only ones that accept cash in Norway anymore are drug dealers. So I shimmed up the rails using some washers. Then I applied a few beads of hot glue. And I pushed the decapitated target practice dummy down on the saw until it stopped moving. The rails were secured with a few screws. And I now realized that I should have built the table saw stand just a few millimeters taller. Oh well, maybe I'll shim it up or something. The workbench works perfectly as an outfeed table the way it is, but in the small workspace I have, being able to use the crosscut sled over the workbench would be very advantageous. And since the table saw stand is mobile, I do not want to route out grooves for the rail and the work surface. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Over at the miter saw, I cut the fences to length. For now, I am just securing the front fence close to the side edges. This is because we will for sure need to adjust it later. The back fence I sent just by feel and then I screwed that down as well. carefully squared up the front fence to the fence of my table saw, using a lot of care and my best squares. However, the rightmost position of the table saw fence turned out to be gaping to the right. This is probably a misguided safety feature and I need to adjust it. And of course, I didn't check this before I did it, because since the two other positions are perfect, well, I thought this one would be as well. Oh well, you live and learn. The back fence was secured with a few extra screws closer to the cut line. I'm not going to adjust the back fence. On a table saw crosscut sled, the function of the back fence is simply to keep the two halves of the sled together, so there is really no need to do it. Then it was time for the inaugural cut, and I will let you enjoy it fully and in real time.
to check the front fence for squareness and to adjust it I used the 5 cut method. That is a video in and of itself and you'll find a link to that up in the right corner and I show it using the metric system. The crosscut sled is now accurate enough for Baby Vader to make a mini wooden Death Star with. Here you can see the calculations from the 5 cut test after adjusting the fence. And what all this garble means is that the cut needs to be 4 meters long to be 1 millimeter out. Being happy with the accuracy of the sled I secured the front fence with more screws. To make the sled slide easier, I treated the bottom with wax. Dirty rags with certain oils and chemicals can be a fire hazard, so I tend to just wrap the rag I have used in the disposal gloves that I am wearing, then I can dispose of them in a fireproof way. Being the proud owner of a brand spanking new crosscut sled I of course had to try it out. Now while this cut of course is more handy and probably safer to do on a miter saw, I just needed to try out my new crosscut sled. And here are a few more pictures of the jewelry box I made for my cousin, mostly using this crosscut sled. There won't be a video of this build, as I was pressed for time and needed to get the box ready for her birthday. But that is it for today guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave a thumbs up. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. You'll find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. Cheers guys and I'll catch you in the next one.